ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد so welcome to another uh, installment in our monthly series, The Reverts Roundtable. And uh, let me begin with an apology. Uh, last month, uh, we had some scheduling issues, and so we did not have a session uh, last month. And we'll try to make sure in the future that that does not happen, uh, because we want to be as consistent as possible. And as we said at the outset, we'd like to take this program from being a monthly one to one which is done with uh, greater frequency. And obviously, in order to achieve that, we have to demonstrate our ability to be consistent with uh, a monthly program. And so, again, I sincerely and deeply apologize for what happened uh, last month. Um, tonight, uh, I wanted to talk about, as, as we usually do typically when we do the Reverts Roundtable, uh, we will open with some type of uh, reminder, uh, a few words to kind of set the table and give us uh, something to think about and even something to discuss if we choose to discuss that, uh, not to say that whatever discussion we have must be confined to whatever topic I've chosen to speak about. Uh, tonight, what I've chosen to speak about is uh, why do we pray? And the reason why I've chosen that topic, brothers and sisters, is because um, it is not uncommon for people in our community and I mean by our community, I mean the revert community, and that's not to say that this is not an issue uh, with Muslims by and large. But particularly in our community, we, um, it's not uncommon for people to struggle with prayer or to know someone who is struggling with prayer, struggling uh, to be consistent with prayer, struggling to offer prayer. And when we look around, we find that there are a lot of talks, there are a lot of lectures, there are a lot of articles which are written about how to pray and how we as Muslims have to pray. But what we don't see a lot of um, is lectures and talks and articles which are written about why we pray, why we should pray, why we should want to pray. And that's kind of what I wanted to speak to uh, today. I think sometimes when people are struggling with prayer, there are certain um, words or reminders or perspectives that if they reflected upon them, it would make it easier for them. It would motivate them to pray. I think sometimes we confront people, could be people in our own household, could be a young person, a teenager, our own child or son or daughter who is not praying, and it's a struggle for us to get them to pray, and we don't have the words to say to them, to convince them, to make them want to pray without being forced to pray or threatened if they don't pray, etc. And so what I wanted to do in this uh, brief talk was provide some of those words and some of those perspectives that can help us if we're struggling with prayer or help us to speak to those who are experiencing difficulty with prayer. So I wanted to mention a few things. I will not give an exhaustive list, but I wanted to mention a few things that I think um, will help us uh, put prayer in the proper perspective and um, to not struggle to pray and to be able to advise those who may be struggling with prayer. So why do we pray? One reason that we pray, brothers and sisters, is because prayer is worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us to worship Him. As He says in the Quran, in Surah 51, Surah Al-Dhariyat, verse number 56, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِعَبُدُونَ I have not created jinn kind and mankind except to worship me. And what that means is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us to do the things that He loves and is pleased with. Do for Him. Offer to him those things that he loves and is pleased with. He's created us to 
be completely submissive to him and subservient to him and to love him absolutely and unconditionally and to demonstrate that love through certain beliefs that we hold, certain statements that we make, and certain acts that we perform. And after a tawheed, after affirming Allah's oneness, ritual prayer is the best form of worship, the best way for us to please Allah, the best way for us to demonstrate our submissiveness to Allah, our love for Allah. And that is why it is considered the second pillar of Islam preceded only by the two testimonies of faith, as we find the hadith of, uh, of Ibn Abbas, in which when the Prophet was sending to Mu'adh ibn Jabal to Al-Yaman, he told him, إِنَّكَ تَأْتِ قَوْمًا أَهْلَ كِتَابٍ فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلْ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ شَهَادَةُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدُ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ فَإِنَا طَاعُوا لَكَ بِذَلِكَ فَأَخْبِرُهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ فَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ خَمْسَ صَلَوَاتٍ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ وَلَيْلَةٍ So in that hadith, the Prophet said, O oh, Mu'adh, you're going to go to a people from the people of the book. Let the first thing you call them to be the shahada. Call them to a tawheed. Call them to the oneness of Allah and the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If they accept that from you, let the very next thing you tell them, you inform them of, you call them to be the five daily prayers. Nothing should precede your calling to the five daily prayers. Nothing is more important than the five daily prayers except the testimony, the testimony of faith. And the Prophet in the Hadith, he referred to uh, a salat, he referred to prayer as the primary prop and column of religion. It is the main thing that supports religion and keeps it in place, keeps us on the straight path. As the Prophet said in the Hadith, رأس الأمر الإسلام وأموده الصلاة He said the head of the matter is Islam. And its primary pillar, its primary prop is the prayer. And in the Hadith collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim from Ibn Mas'ud, the Prophet Sallallahu he was asked, أي uh, العمل أفضل or أي العمل أفضل He was asked which act of worship is best which is the best act of worship what is the best way to worship allah and he said salatu ala waqtiha he said prayer at its prescribed time so one of the reasons we pray is because we've been put here to worship allah and one of the best ways to worship allah is through prayer why do we pray another reason that we pray brothers and sisters is that prayer is a partition between a person and idolatry and disbelief as the Prophet said in the hadith collected by Muslim on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah, الَّذِي بَيْنَ الرَّجُلِ وَالشِّرْكِ وَالْكُفْرِ تَرْكُ salat. He said, what separates between a person and idolatry and disbelief is abandoning prayer. And in the hadith collected by Tirmidhi on the authority of Burayda, I'm, I'm sorry, on the authority of Burayda, he said, فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدْ كَفَرْ Whoever abandons it has disbelieved. And so... One of the reasons why we pray is because it keeps us within Islam. It keeps us Muslims. It keeps us with having hope for salvation. And that's one of the reasons why we pray. Why do we pray? A third reason that we pray is because prayer establishes and maintains a connection between us and Allah. It ensures that we, be, we remain connected with Allah. As we find the hadith collected by Muslim on Tawajib Hurairah, in which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that Allah mighty and sublime, he says, قَسَمْتُ الصَّلَاةِ بَيْنِ وَبَيْنَ عَبْدِي نِسْفَيْنِ وَلِعَبْدِي مَا سَأَلْ He said that Allah, he says, I have divided prayer between myself and my servant into two halves, and my servant shall have what he has asked for. When my servant says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Allah, mighty and sublime, says, My servant has praised me. Hamadani Abdi. My servant has praised me. And what this means 
brothers and sisters, is that every time we pray and recite Al-Fatiha and we say one of its verses, Allah responds. Allah actually, literally responds. There is a conversation going on and even though we don't hear Allah, we know that Allah is saying these things because the Prophet who was a Sadiq al-Masduq, because the Prophet who is truthful and was told the truth, told us Allah responds. So the hadith goes on and it says, and when my servant says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the merciful, the compassionate, Allah mighty and sublime as he says, my servant has extolled me, Allah responds. And when my servant says, Maliki Yawm deen the owner of the day of judgment, Allah says, my servant has glorified me, Allah responds. And on one occasion he said, my servant has submitted to my authority, has recognized that I am the king. And when he says, it is you alone we worship and it is you alone we ask for help. Allah says, he responds, this is between me and my servant and my servant shall have what he has asked for. And when he says, guide us to the straight path, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favors, not of those against whom you are angry, nor of those who are gone, nor the path of those who have gone astray, Allah responds and says, this is for my servant and my servant shall have what he asked for. So as you can see in this hadith, brothers and sisters, the prayer, it establishes a very special and unique connection between us and Allah. We are connecting with Allah through prayer. And this is one of the reasons why we pray. Why do we pray? A fourth reason why we pray, brothers and sisters, is because prayer prevents us from committing abominations and evil deeds. Prayer is a deterrent. Prayer is a restraint. We are human. And it is from our very nature to sin, to transgress, to do the wrong things. As the Prophet said in the Hadith, كُلُّ بْنِ آدَمْ خَطَّعُ Every human being makes mistakes. Every human being is prone to sin. And one of the ways Allah is helping us to not give in to our nature, to not just basically surrender ourselves to uh, the innate inclination to fall into temptation, the, one of the ways Allah is helping us not to do that is through the prayer. The prayer is something which will help us to remain within the boundaries of Islam. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ankabut, the 29th chapter, verse number 45, أُتْلُ مَا أُوحِي إِلَيْكَ مِنْ الْكِتَابِ وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَ عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَلَذِكْرَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرِ Allah says, recite what has been revealed to you of the book and established prayer. Indeed, genuine prayer, when we're praying the right way, should deter one from indecency and wickedness. And the remembrance of Allah is the greatest deterrent. And so brothers and sisters, one of the reasons why we pray is because it helps us remain within the boundaries of Islam. It is a means to deter us from falling into sin. It, it's, a, it's, it's a crutch, it's, 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 it's a shield, it's something which helps us. It's a favor from Allah that helps us to incur the wrath of Allah. Why do we pray? A fifth reason that we pray, brothers and sisters, is because prayer opens the doors to forgiveness and expiate sins. Because even though we have this shield that will help us to avoid sin, we still make mistakes because it's our nature, as the Prophet said in the hadith we previously mentioned. And so when that happens, we're in need of Allah's forgiveness. We're in need of His pardon. And one of the ways we earn His forgiveness and His pardon is through the prayer. The Prophet said in the hadith, Collected by Muslim on Tawajib Hurairah, he said, As-salawat al-khabz, wal-jum'atu ila al-jum'ah, wa ramadhan ila ramadhan, mukaffirat ila ma baynahun, ila jtunibat, ila jtunibat al-kabair. He said, the five daily prayers, one Friday prayer to the next Friday prayer, and one Ramadhan to the one that follows it. All of them will expiate the sins that occur between them, provided that the major sins are avoided. We also have the hadith, Collected by both Al-Bukhari and Muslim, on the Torah of Hurairah, in which the Prophet he once asked his companions, "Araytum lo anna naharan bi babi ahadikum yaktasilu minhu kulla yawm al-khamsa marrat? Hal yabqa min dadinihi shay?" 
So the prophet, he asked his companions, he said, can you imagine if there was a river flowing in front of the door of the home of one of you and he bathed in that river five times a day, would any uncleanness, any dirt, any grime, any sweat, any filth remain on his body? They said, no, he would be entirely clean. There's no way he would be dirty if he bathed five times a day. He replied, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the messenger replied to their response saying, فَذَلِكَ مَثَلُ الصَّلَوَاتِ الْخَمْسِ يَمْحُ اللَّهُ بِهِنَّ الْخَطَايَا He said, that is the likeness of the five daily prayers. Through them, Allah wipes away sins. Every time we pray, brothers and sisters, we get sins wiped away, erased from our record to the point that there's a hadith that says that when a man or a woman offers prayer and they bow, the sins fall off of their back and off of their shoulders. Just basically sins are stacked when you, when you sin, they're stacked upon your shoulders. So when you bow, they fall off. And when you prostrate, they fall off. And this is like what the prophet is saying here that every time we pray, sins get erased from our record. And this is one of the reasons why we pray. Because prayer expiates sins and opens the doors to Allah's forgiveness. Why do we pray? A sixth reason why we pray is because prayer is remembrance of Allah and reminds us of Allah. Allah wants us to remember Him constantly, brothers and sisters. As He says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ Remember me, I will remember you. And when we pray, we remember Allah and are also reminded of Allah. We are reminded of who He is, reminded of what He has done for us, reminded of His rights over us. Prayer is the best form of remembrance and those who remember Allah through prayer and other means will find a solace and a peace of mind denied those who decline to pray. That you're going to find something that people nowadays long for. Solace, peace of mind, comfort, being far away from being depressed or having anxiety or fear. When we have a connection with Allah through prayer, when we remember Allah through prayer, we're going to have that. And this is something that everybody in this world nowadays is seeking. This is the, the era of depression, the era of anxiety, the era of fear, the era of uncertainty. This is the era of that. Everything around us makes us afraid, makes us uncertain, makes us feel a sense of discomfort, a lack of stability. How can we have peace of mind? How can we have solace? Allah is saying we can find it through remembering Him through the prayer. He says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطَمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطَمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبُ Those who believe and whose hearts find comfort in the remembrance of Allah. Surely in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find solace. And so all of us want this, brothers and sisters. We all want to be at ease. We all, want to have, we all want to have comfort and solace and peace of mind. Allah is saying it's waiting for us. It's there for us in the prayer. It's there for us in remembering Him through the prayer. Why do we pray? One last reason I want to mention that we pray. Number seven, prayer is a source of great reward. It's a way that we find rewards from Allah that we can't find in any other deed. It's a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us in ways that we won't be blessed through any other deed. So for example, one of the blessings and rewards that comes from prayer is that prayer is a nur. It is a light for the one who offers it, a light for him in this world, a light in his face in this world, a light for him in the hereafter, a light in his grave, that cold, dark place that all of us are going to a light for him in the grave, and a light for him on the day of judgment, particularly on the sirat, on that bridge over hell, prayer will be a light. As the Prophet said in the hadith, as-salatu, as-salatu nur, prayer is light. 
Also, another reward or blessing that we is, is found in prayer is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we pray, He raises our ranks and status with Him and our rank and status in paradise. And He also, as we mentioned previously, He expiates sins. As we find in the hadith where the Prophet said, عَلَيْكَ بِكَثَةِ السُّجُودِ فَإِنَّكَ لَا تَسْجُدْ لِلَّهِ سَجْدَةً إِلَّا رَفَعَكَ اللَّهُ بِهَا دَرَجَةً وَحَطَّ عَنْكَ بِهَا خَطِيئًا He said, uh, I adjure you to offer a lot of prayer, to pray frequently. Because indeed you will not prostrate to Allah. You will not offer a single prayer to Allah except Allah will raise your rank with Him and He will also remove sins or expiate sins from your record. And finally, from the rewards and blessings that we get for prayer, is that it is one of the greatest causes for people to enter into paradise. And this is what we're all seeking, brothers and sisters. We're doing everything we're doing because we want to be from the people who will receive Allah's paradise, who will enter Allah's paradise, receive His pardon, receive His forgiveness, and be the people who enjoy His pleasure. And so because we're seeking that, if the Prophet tells us that there's a key to it, a primary cause for it, then we should be the people who are actively doing that thing. And one of those primary causes for entering paradise is the prayer. As the Prophet, he was asked by one of his companions, أَسْأَلُكَ مَرَافَقَتِكَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ He said, O Messenger of Allah, I ask you for your companionship in paradise. I want to be in your company in paradise. And the Prophet said, Awaghiradak, he said, O Awaghiradalik, he said, um, do you want just that or would you like something else? So he said, Huwadak. He said, that's it. I just want that. If I can just have your companionship in paradise, I'll be satisfied. Faqala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so the Prophet of Allah, he said, Fa'inni ala nafsik bi sujood. He said, help me Help me in achieving your wish, in achieving your desire by offering an abundance of prayer. As if to say, if you pray a lot, you're going to go to paradise. Not only are you going to go to paradise, but you'll be in the company of the Prophet ﷺ in paradise. And with that, brothers and sisters, uh, we bring uh, the opening uh, discussion or the opening kalima to a close. And I open the floor to any uh, comments, questions, uh, or um, other discussion uh, that we may want to have surrounding this topic or any other topic for the next uh, few minutes, inshallah ta'ala. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa on Nabi Muhammad. Brother and sorry. If there's anybody in the audience who have any questions, Please raise your hand, whether it's related to the topic or any general questions, inshallah. I see that we have a few, uh, we have um, someone in the audience who's new to Clubhouse. We say welcome, thank you for coming tonight. I'm not sure if you know how to use the app or not, but if you want to come up or have any questions, you can send them in the back channel. Um, if you don't want to come up on stage, inshallah. Do any of the other moderators have any questions in the back channel? If not, then um, brother and sir, yes, um, we can close out if you're done. Inshallah. Maybe we can discuss when the next round table would be. Um. Yeah, I guess we could do that. Um. So, uh, as we've said uh, previously, my brothers and sisters, um, we started out uh, with a commitment of once a month, and we were basically doing it uh, the second Tuesday of every month. And we'd obviously like to increase the frequency of our, our gatherings, but obviously we want to do that based upon what is appealing to you, what suits your schedules, etc. So as of right now, uh, the next uh, Reverts Roundtable, if we continue um, the scheduling that we've um, 
we've basically been following so far. Uh, the next round table would be March the 8th, looks like. March the 8th. And so that's when we would meet again, inshallah ta'ala. The time obviously would be to be determined. But March the 8th looks like the next time we would meet. So before we close, we'll offer one more opportunity uh, for anyone in the audience to ask uh, any questions they may have surrounding the topic we talked about. Why do we pray? Or struggles with... Brother, this is Amira. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sister Amira. Because we've been doing this ever since I took my shahada. But we were doing it before I took shahada. That's how I ended up in shahada. <laughs> okay, but anyway. The whole goal is to connect with Allah. Connecting with Allah is the key. And once you connect with Allah and submit to and follow through, on what he says, you're good. I figured it out. I figured it out. And to hear you talk about it made me smile. Because that's how I've gotten through. I've been through a divorce, a fire, house burning down, losing everything. Oh, you wouldn't believe it. But I never lost my rope with Allah, my connection. And that's what keeps me sane. So when you talk about Salat, that's the way of connecting. I didn't know I was making sister when I was a kid having to go to church and look at this dude. Like, I, I can't worship him. He's dead. Go home crying, going to the... Oh, Getting down on my knees, going, God, I know that's not you, I know that's not you, but I can't do anything about it. And later on, finding out when I found out and realized that he was putting me in sense then, I just didn't know what it's, what it's called. So what I'm saying is, sense is the connection directly. And if I get a chance to do that, I'm in sales. It's hard as you know what to get the meeting with the one that's going to give you the money. I got five chances every single day to ask what you told us about earlier. You understand what you said earlier? I have five chances and more. So thank you. I'm Amira. I'm complete. Just for now. Tayyib, <laughs> um, I just, I guess uh, I'll follow up on what uh, Sister Amira said um, because she started out by talking about um, going through a lot and having lost a lot and being able to get through that storm or those storms, those trials and those tribulations by um, uh, making prayer her her crutch by making prayer her coping mechanism by finding solace and comfort uh through prayer uh reassurance through prayer etc um i want to mention as a follow-up to that that one of um the things that uh, causes many people to abandon prayer or uh, to become inconsistent with prayer is that they go through trials and tribulations, uh, they become depressed, um, they become despondent, and one of the first things that they do when that happens is they stop praying, or they start praying infrequently. And to me, uh, the analogy of that, or the likeness of that, is the likeness of a person who is in a lifeboat, in the middle of the ocean, and they have a limited amount of uh, food and provisions. They have a flare gun with a limited number of flares. And they have a lot of uh, belongings that are kind of weighing the boat down and the boat is taking on water. 
So they have, for example, this huge safe, let's say, and it's full of uh, precious gems and wealth and, and other things. But it's very heavy and it's weighing down the boat and it's taking on water. And they're going to have to start throwing things out of the boat in order to keep it from uh, taking on water and sinking. And again, they're in the middle of the ocean and it may be days before uh, they see another ship or a plane crosses over that they can shoot a flare to and make it aware of their presence, etc. And so that person is in that boat and they have maybe some jugs of water. And like I said, they have some uh, limited uh, food and provisions. They have this flare gun. They have this huge safe and some other uh, trinkets and uh, things of value. And rather than throw out that safe and throw out some of those trinkets that are not benefiting them right there in the middle of the ocean, they throw out the flare gun. They throw out the food. They throw out the jugs of water. And they keep those things which won't benefit them or won't keep them alive and sustain them. Brothers and sisters, when we are in those trials and tests and difficult times, one of the first things people do is abandon the flare gun. They abandon the food and provisions. They abandon the jugs of water that will keep them alive. And they keep the safe. And many of us do the same thing. We throw out prayer. That's the first thing we do. We stop praying. We stop remembering Allah. We stop making dhikr. We stop making dua. But we keep watching Netflix. We keep keeping company with people who are not good for us. Maybe non-Muslim companions who tell us, you know, why bother with that religion? If you're going through all this and it's not helping you and God's not helping you, why do you keep praying? Why do you keep... They discourage us from praying and we keep them around. We keep those types of friends and those types of uh, associates and, so, and associations. We keep the television. We keep um, the music. We keep um, other things that we do that are bringing us down, weighing us down. And we throw out the one thing that could lead us to safety. And so it's, uh, I think Amira made a good point. I just wanted to kind of piggyback off what she said and, um, you know, kind of reiterate in a different way and maybe give us some different perspective to it. But prayer, 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 especially in the difficult times. And the prophet said, and, and not just in the difficult times, but even in the good times, because if we pray in the good times, then it will lighten. It will lighten the blur, I'm sorry, lighten the blow of the bad times. As the Prophet said in the hadith, he said, He said, know Allah in the good times, and Allah will know you in the bad times. And so um, I think what she said, uh, may Allah reward her, is, uh, is very pertinent and powerful, and I hope we all can see the pertinence and powerfulness and, and, and the uh, potency of what she said, and that we live our lives accordingly as it relates to the prayer. Is there anybody else who has a question or comment that they'd like to make? Otherwise, we'll prepare to close. Okay, and I don't have any questions or anything in the back, Shama, so inshallah we can prepare to close out. Just okay. Barakallahu feekum. Uh, little disappointed, to be honest with you, but um, if thank you all for coming. Whether we discussed, whether we chimed in or not, you were here. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all for being here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless what remains of your evening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower you with his blessings. And may he surround you with his protection. May he give you the good of this world and the hereafter. And, make he, and may he make us all from those who listen to the talk and follow the best of it. هذا وصلى الله وسلم مباركا بمحمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته